Hey there, this is your girl Shawanda, and you're listening to Refreshing the Soul Podcast, a show where we bring our experiences and God's truth to refresh the heavy and hard places in your soul. From anxiety to unforgiveness, we'll learn how to come to an honest place in our souls and uproot those hidden lies so that you can discover the unique expression God created you to be in this world. everyone. Thank you for tuning back in to another episode of Refreshing the Soul podcast. This is Shawanda, your host. I am honored to always be able to get in front of this mic and speak into the ear of your souls. How is your soul doing? For real, how is your soul doing? Do you even know how your soul is? the state of your soul, your soul. I was just thinking now that sometimes we are not still enough to even know what's going on in us. Sometimes we get caught up in our everyday life and we feel things all the time, but we never stop to really check what's going on in our soul. And I understand you may have kids, you have a job in school, you know, all these different things that you are, roles that you have to do and tasks you have to fulfill. But, you know, one of the things my grandfather said that stuck out to me, and I'll never forget this, he said, the most valuable property is your soul. The most valuable property is your soul. And sometimes we can be so good at taking care of our house property, (laughs) the property of others or whatever job that we're doing. And not to say our kids are our property, but they belong to us. We take care of them. Then we make sure they're groomed, wearing the nice, you know, clothes and shoes and, you know, all these things. But what about your soul? It's a property too. And there's value in it. Whether you see it or not, there's value in your soul because Everything you do comes from some place in your soul. And if we take the time to invest in our soul, to invest in soul care, like really taking care of ourself, our property will be flourishing. It will do all the things that God has created it to do in this world. You know, your soul care can come in so many different ways for different people. One of the things that I love to do to take care of my soul, I love walking outside, being outside, getting fresh air, journaling, especially when I'm outside. I love that. Or even I have this little, it's called a self-care journal and it has pictures in it that you can draw, but it's also a journal where you can write. And it does something to where it stills me where all the things that I could be thinking about is just, it's like all that stuff stops it's still. And it gives me the space to focus on self, to focus on what is going on in my soul. What is going on in your soul? Have you stopped to check it? What are the things that you could do today to start getting yourself in a, a rhythm or a blocking out a space and time where you are taking care of your soul and you're being still enough to know what's going on in your soul. Because the way we think, the way we perceive, all of that is in the place of our soul. Wounds, they're in the place of our soul. The things that we choose in life, the decisions we make, the decisions we don't make because of fear or because of whatever the motivation is in our heart, all of that stuff is grounded in our souls. And if we want to live that abundant life that Jesus died for, yes, it's believing in him. But again, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, you know, because we believe in him, we can come to him. When we come to him, with what's heavy, when we come to him with what's in our soul, he gives us a yoke. He gives us something to carry that is like him, that will lead us to that abundant place, that will lead us to that fruitful place. But one, we got to be still enough to know what is going on in my soul. 
How am I feeling? Did something rub me the wrong way today that I haven't checked? Pausing and being still and say, and being honest and say, man, yeah, when that coworker looked at me funny or I saw these two people whispering, I felt something. I felt, you know, that they were talking about me. Okay, let's deal with that. Take some time to deal with that. Don't graze over your everyday life like it's nothing. That stuff is in your in your soul. You want to live the best life that you can. God wants you to live the best life that his son died for. But taking care of our soul, that's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to come to him. It's our responsibility to say, hey, this is what's going on. I have to check this. I have to do something about this. This does not line up with peace. I'm telling you, that's my, that's been like my word lately. I, I keep seeing it, hearing it. And he wants us to live in a place of peace. I was listening to Pastor Michael Todd. He has this message called Peace Under Pressure. And in that message, he showed a picture of, you know, this calm, you know, this outdoors, the sun setting, like different places that look so nice to be at, a beach. And he said, this is what we think peace is. But then he showed a picture of a storm. And in the middle of this storm, there is this bird that found this crook in this mountain or in this rock to sit in or to lay in. He said, that's peace. And that is so true. Peace is not something that is, number one, found in anything exterior. It's a false sense of peace, not the peace of God. Maybe the peace of man, our peace is found in those times where we can go on vacation, the time where we're not working, where we can binge watch, you know, our favorite TV shows or sitting outside on a beach, maybe that is our ideal of peace, but you can do all those things and your soul not be at peace. Your soul is scattered with tomorrow. Your soul is scattered with thoughts of what you may fear while you're sitting on a beach, while you're next to your loved ones. And God wants us to experience true peace and true peace. It doesn't need the whole world to be calm before it can be calm. True peace says, even in the middle of a storm, I have found calmness in the one who lives inside of me. I have found stillness in the one who lives inside of me. And one of the things that Pastor Todd said to to have peace like that, to have peace under pressure is to tap into our advocate our Holy Spirit, to ask for his help, to not go through each day allowing the pressure of life to be something we lift on our own because there are going, there are going to be pressures in life. Not every day is going to be good. And I just want to even encourage you this morning or this evening or whenever you're listening to this, use the Holy Spirit, ask for his help. That's exactly what he was sent for, to help us every day. Even if it's with something that seems so minor or so small to you, turn to him in the face of it and say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Teach me in this moment how to do this or how to respond here. Be honest with him of where you're at. Be open with Holy Spirit. And allow him to speak to you, allow him to strengthen you. Like there is a real inner supernatural strength that Holy Spirit will give you where even when life does feel like there's a lot of pressure or it feels like it's too much for you or it's too heavy for you because Holy Spirit is helping you and because he is there you're not feeling the weight of it. You're not, you're, you're not supposed to feel the weight and the heaviness of life. That's why Jesus says, come to me, all who are heavy. Do you hear that? 
God's like, I, I don't want your soul to be heavy. So I encourage you not just to ask for the Holy Spirit help when you're heavy, but to make it a daily thing. Like I can't live without him every day, every hour, every minute of my life. That should just be our our soul cries that I need you, Holy Spirit, all the time. So even when life starts to feel heavy or weighted, I'm not trying to figure out how to tap into you. I've been doing this daily. I've been coming to you daily. And throughout the day, I'm asking for your help. I'm seeking your wisdom. I'm being patient in the way that I respond so I can hear from you on how to respond. And if you say, man, that's too deep, that's too much. Well, you don't know Jesus in that way. There's a part of you that is missing the God kind of life that he wants you to live. Because when you experience the peace of God, when you experience what he can give you, you're going to want him in every way, in every part of your day. I just pray right now for those listening and you are not experiencing the peace of God. Father, I lift up these listeners, Father, to you right now. And I pray, Father, in Philippians, it says, not to worry, but in all things, we can, we can come to you. We can tell you what we need. Father, I know you hear their needs right now. I pray that they open their mouth, not to their best friend, but they open their mouth to that inner best friend, that Holy Spirit, that they make Holy Spirit their best friend and they ask for help. Father, your word says to also be thankful. And so, Father, we choose to see what's good, not just what's not working, but we choose to thank you for what we, for what we do have. And then we will experience the peace of God. Thank you, God, that that peace will flood their hearts, Father. It will guard their heart and their mind, just as your word says. It will guard them from the pressures of life. It will guard them from the winds and waves of this life, God. And Father, every time they experience your peace, Father, I pray that it just deepens their level of commitment to you, of wanting you and needing you throughout the day not in just bad moments, but Father, that they will just have a desire for you daily. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just felt led to pray for you there. And, you know, and that's really actually what today I want to talk about. You know, we're dealing with refreshing the controlling soul, you know, the soul who feels, or maybe you don't even realize it, that You are, and I'm trying to think of a different word than controlling, (laughs) but you are all over everything in your life. Or maybe there's, when it comes to, like me, having to know all the steps before I do something or feeling a sense of, honestly, a false peace. I mean, feeling a false peace is really a false peace when you have all these things planned out or because I know everything, like I'm good. And God wants us to loosen the reins on the things that we control or on the things that we feel like we have to control. Because really, ultimately, God is in control and we only cause ourselves more frustration, more headache when we keep trying to hold on to the thing that God wants us to let go and surrender to him. And one of the things for me, it was time. He was like, I need you to surrender the time that you need to see this, the time that you want to know this, like surrender your time because I'm going to do things when I'm going to do it, not when you want to do it. I'm God, not you. And you don't want to be God. See, we, we're not very good guys. <laughs> we're not good guys. We think that we would be, but we're not. God is a God who sees the end 
and the beginning. He knows all the in-between. And he is such a perfect God. He is a loving God. He is a patient God. And for us, we're not any of those things without him. On our own, I wouldn't be patient. It is because of God's love. He is teaching me patience. It's because of the Holy Spirit that I have the fruit of patience, that I can tap into it. So being in control, we really have to ask ourselves, why do we want all this responsibility over our life? Why do I have to force things and make things and manipulate things to work out the way I want it to work out? Do I really want to be God? of my life? And how can I allow God to be God over my life? Maybe sometimes we don't even know how to keep God in authority or keep God in command. And I believe that the more that we pray through seeking him, through talking to him, through hearing from him, God will reveal the areas of where this is what I'm working on. This is where I want you to relax. This is where I want you to be still. Or this is what I want you to do. Or this is how you should respond. When we take the time to commune with God in prayer, we are submitting ourselves to his authority. And as I believe, even with prayer, prayer does something to the heart. It softens our heart. It softens my heart. One, it keeps me in this place of I am not Lord over my life. I'm going to the one who is the authority. I'm going to the one that I belong to. So now my heart is is already getting into a place of submission to hear from the Father. So how do we keep God in authority? How do we follow this chain of command of where I am not the lead over my life? God is, and I want to make sure I'm following what he says. It's through prayer. That That's one thing that keep pulling at my heart is, Shawanda, you have to, you have to pray. You have to talk to God. And for me, and this is for me, I can't just do it in the morning. It's not enough. I have to find time to pray throughout the day. And when I say throughout the day, sometimes praying is just taking that time and acknowledging God in a moment. Sometimes just putting my soul in a place of an awareness for him and saying, God, I just thank you for just the clear blue skies that I can, that I see right now, finding opportunities to be grateful, finding times to just say, I love you. That is softens the heart that keeps you in a place of submission to your father. And one of the scriptures I wanted to read today is from Luke seven, six through nine. It it caught my attention when I was reading this because in Luke, I had been just studying how, you know, Jesus, yes, he was performing his miracles and he was doing all these great things, but he often went away to pray right? Like, I'm like, wow, you know, Jesus in between doing the things that he was called to do, he was still called to pray. He was still called to have this relationship with the father. And there was nothing that he was just doing completely on his, on his own. I just saw when he would go and get away from the crowds to pray. It was like, you know, I need this. My strength comes from God, my energy, my, even the words of how I respond, I just see Jesus going to God for that so that he could go back to the people. And so it kept him in a place of, okay, he is authority. He is the reason why I'm able to do what I'm doing. And just as much as I am called to the people, just as much as we are called to our kids, our job, our business, school, what all the different things that we do, we are called to prayer. We are called to commune with the Father. We are called to spend time with Him. That is just as much important. And so I got to this place in Luke 7, and it caught my attention because it's about a a Roman officer who had a slave, and the slave was dying. 
and he wanted Jesus to come and heal his slave, right? His servant. In one text, the text I'm reading in LT, it says that he had a slave that was sick and near death. And so he had his soldiers go out and, excuse me, I don't think it was his soldiers. I'm just going to, I believe it was some of the Jewish people that went out and said, hey, you know, the Roman officer is asking for you to come and heal his his servant. And so as Jesus was on his way, I'm going to pick up in verse six, where the Roman officer, watch what the Roman officer says and do. Verse six says, so Jesus went with them, but just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. Verse nine, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Wow. So what caught my attention was verse eight, where the Roman officer says, I know that you can heal my servant from right where you are. He says, because I am under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. And why that stood out to me, you know, the Roman officer, he could have just said, listen, I know you can heal my servant from where you are, because just as I have authority over my soldiers, you have authority over your words. But he didn't say that. He said, the reason why I know you have authority over your words is because I am under authority. That's what he says. He said, he said, I am under the authority of my superior officers. So he's equating himself to Jesus. He's saying, just as I am under authority of my officers and I have authority of my soldiers, you are under authority of God, but you have authority over your words. Wow. This Roman officer noticed the chain of command. I believe, you know, when Jesus says in verse nine, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. It was more than the fact that yes, Jesus could heal even from where he, he was at. But the fact Jesus saw that the Roman officer knew this because of the authority authority Jesus was under, not just the authority that Jesus had, but the authority Jesus was under. See, God has given us authority to speak and to declare things. He has given us authority to speak his word, but our authority is not from a place of us being detached or disconnected from God just because he's given us that it comes from a place of because of we are continually to stay in prayer with him we are continually staying connected in him that we have this authority I just believe that it was seen that Jesus wasn't just out doing all these things apart from him taking that time away, stealing away. People would look for him like, where did he just go? This guy, this man, Jesus lived from a place of under authority, not just doing everything on his own, but he remained in prayer with God. He remained in prayer with the authority. He didn't do things on his own. When he spoke, he spoke in a way of, he says, hey, I do and I say what I hear my father say, what I see my father do. It was apparent. It was shown in the way he lived. And this Roman officer saw that. He saw not just the the healer, but the son. 
And Jesus says, wow, I have not seen faith like that. But God wants us to operate in the same way that we're not just all these different, we're not just all these different roles that we ought to play. And I shouldn't say play, but we don't just see ourselves through, you know, I'm a mother. So that's me authority over my kids or lead over my kids. I am a father. I am a husband or I am a business manager. I am. He doesn't want you just to see yourself through the lens of what you have authority over, but he wants you to see yourself as a child to him, as a servant to him, as an officer, and he as the superior officer. God wants you to understand the chain of command that's there. And no, it's not about God issuing out all these orders and us just doing what we're supposed to do like we're robots or like we're where we are, you know, we just do things on command and there's no feelings, there's no life, there's no relationship. No, everything that we do is from a place of love, is from a place of obedience because we love our father, because we know our father, because we know he has the best, he, that he is in control and because we want him to be in control, because we trust his direction, because we trust who he who he says he is. God wants us to submit to his authority from that place and not looking at our life like we have to lead it on our own. And so I just thought that that was like just amazing. I never, I've read that scripture before, but I never truly looked at it from a place of this chain of command where he he saw Jesus under the authority of God. And that's what we want people to see in our lives, that we are under his authority. That the things that are, that we're blessed with, that we're favored with, we're not so quick to be like, yeah, I did that and I did this. No, God did it. He allowed it to happen. He blessed me with it. It's because I'm listening to him. I'm just doing what my father says do. I'm just saying what my father says to say. And so the way, again, that we keep this chain of command, that we remain under the authority of God is through prayer. Prayer keeps our heart tender before God. Prayer keeps us humble. Prayer keeps us under his authority. When we're, when we are, when we make time for prayer, when we make time to be still, Just allow that prayer time to be a monologue. Something that Joyce Meyer says is it's a dialogue. Allow him to speak back to you. Allow him to give you direction. Allow him to give you encouragement. Be sensitive to his voice and allow that prayer time to become something special, to become something that you want. I think we dread sometimes. I feel like maybe I should talk for myself. Like I would... I don't want to say dread, but I would make prayer so much more than what it needed to be instead of making it something, oh, this is an obligation I have to fulfill. No, it's time I want to spend with the Father. It's time I want to receive direction and his word and I want to hear his voice. And then it just becomes something that's a part of your everyday life because you realize you need him. You need his, you need his authority. You want him to be lead over your life. And so I just pray that you got something from this message and that you turn to the Father, turn to the Holy Spirit in everything, acknowledge him, acknowledge where you're at, be still, and take that time to just commune with your Father. He wants to hear from you. <laughs> something I tell my my kids all the time, did you talk to Did you talk to God today? You know, he wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear you say, I love you. He loves you. And so I tell you that today. Did you talk to God today? Will you talk to your father today? He wants to hear your voice. And in it, you will hear his voice. And you will be able to remain under his authority because you know that he loves you, 
because you know that he has what's best for you. There's no one who can speak to you the way God does. There's no one who can give you a peace like God's peace. And when we can tap into that, when we can start making that more of a everyday thing and not a an occasional thing, that's when we can experience the peace of God. That's when we can really operate in the authority of our Father, where really the things that we speak, it is from Him, and we see things move. We see our lives change. We see people's lives change, the people we've been praying for. I've been seeking God daily for things people that I want to see healed, people I want to see set free. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing like the progress in front of my eyes. But are we going to take the time to pray? Are we going to take the time to submit ourselves to the Father? What is it that you can give up control and give it over to God today? What is it that you can submit and surrender to God today? Go and write it down somewhere. Take some time to journal or whatever the thing that you do for your soul care and give it to God. All right, you guys, I love you. And I want to go ahead and end with these confessions for the controlling soul. I believe as you speak these and believe these, that it will soften your heart in the place where you I don't feel like you you have to hold on tight to something or you feel that if if you don't know this or if you don't touch this, then it won't work out right. No, God's word says not to worry. He has a good future, a good plan for us. And so we're going to trust him. We're going to believe this word together. Amen. All right. So repeat after me. I choose not to worry about anything, but instead to come to you about everything. I will experience peace for my life, which is far more than anything I can understand. God's peace will guard my heart and mind, not what I can control. I will not trust what I can understand or figure out, but I choose to lean on you. I will be still. Seek you first and trust you are in control. I will not fear the unknown of tomorrow. I choose to trust the God of timing and the God of tomorrow. All right, you guys pray you got something from this word. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. And remember to go to him about everything. Do not worry. God is in control. All right, everyone, that wraps up this week's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast so we can get refreshing to those souls who need it. Also, don't forget to head over to Amazon where you can purchase that 30-day devotional Rest for the Soul by yours truly. Um, You want to get it in your hand. And just remember, soul care is self-care. Until next time, bye-bye.